You're listening to Resonance 104.4 FM, or maybe you're not. In which case, pay attention. attention. This is London's finest community arts radio station. Well, look at this! Here's the guy here just in the nick of time. What does that make us? Big damn heroes, sir. Ain't we just? You, there. What is your profession? I'm a potter. And you, Arcadian, what is your profession? Sculptor, sir. And you? Blacksmith. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> you see, old friend, I brought more soldiers than you did. Why should the people listen to you? Because, unlike some other Robin Hoods, I can speak with an English accent. Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM, a film and TV radio show where a handful of film enthusiasts shoot the breeze about all things film and television. I'm Marcus E. Ako, and my, uh, this time it'll be Amazon Recommends uh, today, Amazon Recommendation would be The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Brilliant, brilliant show, isn't it? It is. We'll talk about it after I'm Laura Sampson, and my recommendation this week has got to be Channel 4, if you're in the UK, Hulu, if you're in the US, Handmaid's Tale. Uh, It's just finished in the US. It's not yet finished over here, which is a bone of contention for me, but we'll talk about that later. (laughs) Okay, well, bones of contention aside, my name is David Campbell. Uh, Welcome to Resonance. Um, my recommendation this week, well, I've only just got Netflix and I'm just starting to r- scroll all the way through it. So what's the first thing you watch on Netflix? Um, I'm starting on, a, actually, I just finished reading the book on Tupac. Yes. And there is a documentary or no, a, a drama series on Netflix about Tupac and Biggie, the whole shooting and everything else, but also the involvement of the LAPD. Yeah, that's and, unsolved, right? Yeah. I think it's that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So I'm just starting my way through that. Okay. So, yeah. You see, I, I I saw that pop up. I was thinking about watching it. I haven't watched it yet. Mm-hmm. It's on my list, but it's it's fallen right to the bottom because there's a number of things that have popped up on Netflix and Amazon Prime that I'm just you know powering through. Marvelous Miss Maisel, as I was talking about that, it's one that Laura was uh, championing a few weeks, well months ago. Yeah, months. Uh, yeah, months. <laughs> yeah. And I've always seen it there, and it's always popped up, and something has always like pushed me away from it. And then last night. We just decided to sit down and watch it, and we've breezed through about eight episodes in one night. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's, it's one of those shows. It really is. It's really good. It, when it, is the next series coming? I don't even know. I, I, I think, isn't it, isn't it out yet? It's not out yet. Not has, yet. Okay. I, I think it's this... Uh, this year, but towards the end of the year. Yeah, it, it, and it's if you if you've got Amazon Prime, uh, you can you can watch it. It's about it's about um, uh, it's set in the fifties, and it, it's about this couple. Well, actually, mainly about the, the woman, um, Marge Maisel, um, or Midge, Ma- Midge, Midge. Sorry, Midge Maisel, uh, and her. There's no spoiler. It's in the trailers. Her husband breaks up with her. Her husband is is trying to be a stand up comedian, but he's terrible, and he breaks up with her after a night that he bombs in in, in the uh, at a comedy uh, on a comedy show. And she goes up on stage just and just rants, and she's hilarious. Uh, and it's it's a great show. Go and check it out. It's got a lot of uh, a big, a lot of uh, famous faces in there. Tony Shalhoub is in there. Kevin Pollock is in there. Different people just pop up now and again, and I'm just watching it. I'm like, really. And there's there's a Lenny Bruce character as well. Those of you who follow stand up comedy know Lenny Bruce. Uh, there's someone who plays Lenny Bruce, and then he sort of takes her under his wing and so on. But go and watch it. It's 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 great. Laura, you're talking about Handmaid's Tale. I was, and I could talk about it for probably the next hour because I just love it so much. I've been, ever since I saw the last episode on Channel 4, which was episode 8 or 9 of 13, um, I've been 
I've been going through YouTube looking for clips for later <laughs> episodes. Fair enough. Because um, I know that that Hulu has finished the series the over in season. America. Yeah. Uh, over uh, the second series, yeah. And my American friends have all seen it. Uh-huh. Basically, half the world has already seen it. Yeah, because but, it, it, uh, Channel Emmys, Four won't let me. Yeah, the see Emmys it. are uh, uh, being announced soon, right? Uh, um, because the, I know the list, the nominations came out, and a lot of people in the um, in uh, Handmaid's Tale have been nominated. So it's going, it's going to do big, just as, just like the first season did. But it's still not showing in the UK, is it? Not the last few episodes. Sure. I mean the. There's stuff that happens in the last four episodes uh-huh. that I think is cruel to make people in the UK wait, wait for. Thanks, Channel 4. Sure. Who, whoever, whoever decided that we would be a month behind, I don't like you. You know, I, you know, I still <laughs> haven't seen it. I still haven't seen Handmaid's Tale. I mean, I've seen it pop up, by, uh, and, and you know, a, a lot of a lot of great actors are in it. Ot Fag Bale is in it. Um, uh, uh, the 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 lead, I can't remember her name, but she's Elizabeth in Moss. Elizabeth Moss, yeah, from um, from uh, Mad Men and a whole bunch of other shows like that. Um, and, and a number of other character actors pop up here and there. And Dowd, um, Joseph Fiennes. Yes, Joseph Fiennes is in it. Um, uh-huh. Yvonne Strahovski, I haven't seen her in anything else, but she plays this really cold. Um, piece of work uh-huh. uh, as the wife and she is really amazing as well yeah. and a couple of new characters are introduced in series two who I think really um, yeah they really add to the emotional impact of it let's say sure David have you seen it have you seen Hamid Taylor no not at all I good so I'm not alone this. in this that I haven't seen Hamid Taylor it's Taylor. very <laughs> difficult not to do spoilers but I think it's quite a difficult. They all die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a difficult show to binge because it, it is so intense all yeah. the time. Um, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I did binge the whole thing in one night. You, and you can because it, it, while it's it, it has it, it doesn't it doesn't have really a strong gut punch that would make you feel depressed. It's it's a very cheerful t- type of show, uh, unlike Handmaid's Tale, which is effectively just full on. Um, it, it's gloom and. Because uh, it, 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 what tell us what the storyline is? I, I have an idea of what it is, but I don't want to butcher it. What well, is it? Well, it's a, a p- plausible, maybe less plausible, <laughs> near future world um, where America has been taken over by a totalitarian regime and is now called Gilead, mm-hmm. and that came about to partially to solve a problem of uh, women's fertility which which plummeted yes and what what happens is that the men go into complete power and the women are split up into the roles that they play in the society sure uh, a bit like how you might imagine um Mormons to me or something. So there are wives. Don't just pick a particular. Uh, you, you just drop that in. It's like yeah, you just like Mormons. And a lot of if we have any more. Well, actually, I was going to say if we have any Mormon yeah, listeners, let's, but let's we don't m- really move on. We're sorry, not, um, we're, sorry, not, we're sorry, not gonna have uh, any Mormon uh, um, listeners now, are we? An, or, but, an authoritarian yeah, no. regime Fair where enough. where um, where women's roles are very defined mm-hmm. and where women are subjugated, oppressed. Sure. Uh, they're not allowed to read. They're not allowed to vote. They're not allowed to work. Um, except for these particular roles as wife, as handmaid, which is a kind of um, a surrogate, uh-huh. um, a f- kind of surrogate slave to rich families. So it's a very bleak depiction of, uh, 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 it's a post, not post-apocalyptic, but it's a, but it's a bleak de- um, view of, of the future in America. And it's and, and that's what you're saying. It's difficult to binge watch something like that because you just, you'll end up just shutting the shades and just not going out. Well, Yes, especially since it's contrasted really starkly with um, Canada, um, yeah, which, which yeah. is still going on in uh, in the in ordinary normal. non-totalitarian sure. way. That makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. But at the same time, it's an utterly beautifully designed show. You just kind of can't take your eyes off it. The costumes are amazing. Um, the soundtrack's amazing. The way um, you know the way that people move about the world in this really graceful, slightly um, 
I don't know, nightmarish sort of a way yeah. is really very compelling. You, okay. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I, while I'm watching wonderful Miss uh, Mrs. Uh, Maisel, I'm just I'm because that is upbeat and prep and peppy. I'm going to sort of alternate. Yeah. So I'll do one episode and I'll go and watch one episode of uh, of A Handmaid's Tale and then back back to wonderful Miss Maisel and marvelous Miss Maisel and then back to it. Just that way it cheers me up. Right? You do need something. Um, Something light to counterbalance it, <laughs> was, most definitely. I, I was going to say either that or I could just take some coke, but now yeah. I'm not. I'm not recommending that at all. So that You're was talking just about a, Coca-Cola, aren't you? Yeah, of course, of Coca-Cola. Course. Oh, well, right. Even now, I can get in trouble. Yes. It's like caffeine is like no, it's Coke Zero. <laughs> You're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Acco. I'm Laura Sampson. I'm David Campbell. And if you haven't noticed, we don't have a guest today, but that's not a problem. This is fine. It's the threesome. Uh, uh, matching what our hashtag hashtag it's all about the three way which it's makes sense it's all about the three way thank you Elise Elise Quevedo who helped us get uh, hashtag and uh, and Bijang Tong who came in and uh, helped us uh, decided upon that particular um, hashtag follow us on Twitter STB underscore Resonance FM follow us on Facebook shoot the breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM and pitch in your ideas for top five categories for movies that you like and so on and so forth and what we should next watch on Netflix or Amazon or Hulu well not Hulu <laughs> Um, Channel hey, Four, no, ITV. We have guests in the we have guests in the US. We have guests out. We're not guests. We have uh, v, uh, listeners outside of the UK who and some could get might have VPNs and be yeah, able to get. Yeah, Hulu. again, don't suggest illegal activity because it's not illegal. We, Okay, didn't you say it just sounded really illegal? So don't no, go, don't not, go there. We, not, yeah, the last thing we want is to get kicked off the air. This is true. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, go, go on, uh, send us your recommendations, uh, and we can talk about it on the show. Just as we'll be talking about our top five, um, uh, what is our top five favorites? Which this uh, th- today is going to be. Uh, swords and sandals so if you want to send us any of your your suggestions for top five favorite uh, films and tv shows that are sword and sandal related send that send them in and we can uh, talk about them on air uh, apologies for the air you know the the constant flight sound outside the window it's it, it, again the uk are going through um, uh, you know uh, severe heat um he, what, what did you call it is it heat, heat, wave? heat wave thank you uh, we're going through a heat wave uh, and so windows are open um I like the heat. I don't, you know, people are complaining about the heat and whatnot, but I don't care. I like the heat. But we have to leave the window open. Otherwise, these two that are sitting next to me will fry, and the threesome will just hang become on, a hang one. On, hang on, I'm, I'm not bothered about the heat. It's just I want to be able to breathe. <laughs> Wuss. What? Need, need some air coming through. You, know? you don't need no. You, you don't need to breathe. It's fine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get, before we carry on with that, let's go into our next segment, which is film and TV news. <laughs> So the first item that we'll discuss on the news today is Walking Dead have added Dan Fogler and Elena Matsura to season nine of The Walking Dead. Well, as The Walking Dead, obviously. If you don't know the, what The Walking Dead is, it's a TV show that's based on the graphic novel The Walking Dead, uh, which, fo- which is a post-apocalyptic um, America, I guess. They don't go out of America, where there are zombies, or what, rather, they don't refer to them as zombies, they refer to them as walkers. And we follow a group of survivors. One of them led, well, the, the leader is uh, Rick Grimes, played by Andrew Lincoln, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Britain's own and- Andrew Lincoln. Uh, and this show's been going on for eight seasons. Mm. Um, what? Uh, they, they, <laughs> okay, before so we what go. So, uh, what does this addition of characters mean to you? Yeah. So, before we get go, we talk about the addition, I want to ask the two of you: Have you seen The Walking Dead yet? Right. Walking Dead. I used to watch when it first came on Channel Five. Mm-hmm. Then Channel Five decided to politely says dick around with the time. Oh so yeah. They, they, they just moved. It, they just kept on moving it around, and it was just like oh. Good gosh and after a little while when they keep moving the times around you start yeah. to lose track of it and that, that's it that's true that's how um <laughs> Sur- that's no that's how firefly <laughs> lost their their um, following uh, following you know they dropped in the ratings when it was on in the states mm. um they kept moving around fox kept moving around uh, the show without telling anyone when it was mm. and so they were getting low ratings and so they canceled the show after one season yeah what so channel five are doing the same thing they were doing the same thing and and now i i don't think it's on channel five but, yeah um, just related and, I, and i'm not too sure sure if this is related but you know that um the series beware the walking dead uh, fear the walking dead fear the walking dead yes. is now going to be on uh e4 
Yes, yes, it is. Um, so because it was originally on AMC or, or no, so it was AMC. It's AMC or B, uh, Virgin TV on um, something like that, on yeah. Sky. AMC. Yeah. Oh, um, it's, it's it's an AMC uh, production, uh, but on in the UK we get it on either BT TV or AMC channel, which is is again is one of the premium channels that you need to get. Yeah. But it, you're right. It's starting. It's starting from season S- one, scratch, right on from E4. scratch, and. If that's the case, then as long as E4 are going to play, um, just keep to the same time, which yeah. I think they will, absolutely, I'll, I'll probably be end, ended up watching that. See, here's the thing. Okay, I I, I didn't know it was on Channel Five. I, I didn't know um, Walking Dead was on Channel Five. Yeah, when I it first watch, started, mm. I watch it on Fox, which is on Sky. I can't right. remember the ch- channel number, but it's Fox. Um, it used to be FX. It's now Fox. Um, they are quite religious, not religious, yeah, religious. They steadfast in what time? It's always Monday, 9 p.m. Because in the, in America, it's on Sunday around 9 p.m. So they basically have to, in order to prevent piracy and everything else, they have to immediately show it over here. Yeah. And it's such a big deal. It's it's it, The Walking Dead has a huge following. Oh, God, yes. Um, and there's so many, like, um, viewers shows, you know, like the mm. post-game analysis of the episode has been shown. So you have um, uh, this guy, Chris, I can't remember his name, but he he's recently had some scandal happened to him um uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where you know the whole sexual allegation kind of thing and uh, so he's he's now dropped someone else is stepping into role they do a post game analysis of the walking dead so i'm a huge walking dead fan uh laura, just laura just throw it to you have you seen the walking dead yet <coughs> i've read the <coughs> comics but i've not seen any okay of the series i am a walking dead tv virgin well I'm, should i oh, embark on this nine <laughs> nine series uh well you're asking a person universe who, you're asking a self-confessed a Walking Dead apologist because even it's like I've I've stuck with the show since episode from since the, from the first episode um, right through till the last episode of season eight and I I admit it's it it has had its issues it has its problems um, and it has its problems and uh, going forward and whatnot um, but I'd still say go and check it out that that's an ambulance just going by don't worry it's not, not any of us um it's an it, it's it, it is a, it's a good show it's a it's a good show for me my favorite season was season four i i think season four was an excellent season it's what pulled me back into the show and it is what's given me hope that it will get better i i do get disappointed almost at the end of every season because it's like come on that's yeah and then they introduced a new character called um negan you know negan you read the comic books uh played by mm. jeffrey dean morgan and i thought he was a, he was he injected a new life into the show um but then even that storyline sort of dragged and and so on um but i i would still i'm still gung-ho to go and watch it the if fact I was, go on, sorry if i was going to drop in uh on a particular season that wasn't season one where should i start i would say season four um, season four. Uh, oh, actually, maybe not even season four. Um, the reason why I'm saying not season four is because one of the reasons why season four, the first episode, first and second episode of season four, had such a great impact was because of the setup leading up to season four. So watch season three. Do season three first. Or, yeah, that's what it should do. do. Because they do half seasons, right? So start halfway through season three, go into season four, and you just carry on through. Uh, I, I, fan, I, I, it was one of my favorite shows. One of my, uh, it dropped out of top ten because of the last couple of seasons. But a year ago, two years ago, it was firmly number five in my top ten. Um, anyway, the story today is about Dan Fogler. Uh, you, those of you who've watched um, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, he's one of the actors in that. Uh, and Elena Matsura. Those of you who follow Into the Badlands, which is on Amazon Prime, she's in it. She's a fantastic, fantastic actress. You, she's in the Spooks movie, um, uh, and, and she, she's she's. Anyway, there's a lot of love f- coming from this side of the studio uh, for <laughs> Elena Matsura. She, uh, the fact that she's in it makes me want to go back and watch it. I was going to go watch it anyway, but now I'm going to watch it with extra vigor, especially the fact that Andrew Lincoln is supposedly... I won't say anything else about it for those people who haven't watched it. Carry on watching it, and there's, that news might not have broken. So when's the next series coming? Uh, it, it should be probably end of this year, uh, towards the end of the year, maybe around November time. It's always a big event. There's always like publicity around, so you can't miss it when it's going to come out. It will come out, and... Uh, uh, and you, you'll see you'll see the news, and I will I will talk about it. I'll make sure everyone knows. If you want to watch it, I'll get you ramped up before the show starts. Right, thank Probably you. what will happen is um, th- they will announce that it's coming to the British television, and they will turn and say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and catch up on the box sets. 
Yes, yeah, yeah. They you can get the, you can get the box sets on, if you if you've got Sky, you can get the box sets on on Fox and whatnot. But if not, they'll probably just release, as you said, to release yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Ako. I'm Laura Sampson, and I'm David Campbell. So, uh, David, what's the next uh, piece of news you want to bring up? Um, well, people who've been um, watching the news would have followed that whole issue with the um, sixteen uh, six guys or. 11 guys, I think it is. There are 12 boys and a football coach that were trapped in the caves in Thailand. Yes. You yes, that's been that's been a really harrowing story over yeah, the last few weeks, yeah. hasn't it? Well, um, as you would have guessed, um, they want to make a movie of it. And Who's they? Hollywood and several other people. In actual fact, they're rumoured to be six productions in the pipeline, plus a documentary. All Hollywood? Uh, not all Hollywood, some of them um, from Thailand themselves, but the Thai, the Thai government is saying, whoa, 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 you need to come to us and we need to approve. Because they, what they're frightened of is that it turns into a Hollywood mainstream hashtag whitewash. <laughs> sure. Um, so they're, they're turning around and saying to filmmakers, if you're going to film this, it's going to be in our country. It's got to be with our agreement, and we need to know exactly what you're going to do. So they're not actively stopping anyone from going to make the movie. They're just basically saying you have to come and check you with need us to first. Come and check with us, and and they will basically be a, a, a sort of a check gate, a stop gate to to review what the proposals are. So different production companies would all put their proposals in for mm. what project they want to do. They investigate, it, they see it, and then they say, "Yep, it matches our criteria. Go for it." Yeah, I mean, the Thailand's culture minister has said that five international film production companies have proposed that they make a movie and a documentary about the rescue and one only one of them is from a Thai company okay and the Thai company um, the producer director Tom Waller um, he's working on the film but he says he wants to focus on the Thai elements and the unsung heroes and one of the things that caught my eye was the fact that he said that the boy the kids had no idea that the, the eyes of the world were sure. on them at the time of sure. the rescue. They they were just like, okay, we're here. We're just trying to get out. We're focusing on not eating, blah, 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 meditating, as you told me earlier. Um, and they actually assumed that once they got out of the cave, they would have to get on their bikes and ride, ride home. I mm-hmm. mean, how... how you know how humble is that? And okay, I you know before you said that before you t- you said about um, the Taiwanese government, um, the Thai- Taiwanese or Thai- Thailand, Thai. Thai- sorry Thailand government, the Thai government, mm-hmm. um, sort of imposing that stopgap. I was kind of skeptical, but then as you were saying, as you, as you carried on reading the story, it kind of dawned on me that you you're absolutely right. I I'm, I'm not actually against that idea of them. Um, so sort of modulating what the production company is going to be doing. Because here's here's why, uh, here, here's an image that popped into my head. Mm. The story itself is about these boys who went and got stuck, uh, who, you know, you live in their lives, went uh, school trip, got stuck, got rescued, right? And then two types of product, two types of storylines popped into my head, which could be done if it was done by an American company. And I'm saying American company, by a Western company, right? Mm-hmm. One storyline would be like Alive. It, 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 you, have you seen the film Alive? Oh, yes, yeah. Um, it, where Ethan Hawke and a number of other characters, uh, they are the, um, the is it Ecuadorian um, rugby team. I think it's Ecuadorian. It's South American uh, rugby team. They get um, stuck on a, on a mountain and, um, and they have to, you know, they, they have to go through different trials and tribulations to get down from the mountain and get rescued. And it's played by, you know, as you said, whitewashing, right? Mm. So the first thing that popped into my head was first storyline was you're going to have people like Justin Bieber playing one of the people stuck in the thing, right? Mm. Maybe not Justin Bieber per se, but, but, you, but you, kind of, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a blonde, blue eyed uh, character or actor who goes and does that. We talked about uh, Scarlett Johansson having that kind of issue, you know, yeah, exactly, you know, yes. And, and for Robin Tug. So there was that, there's that aspect to it. The second storyline popped into my head, which may not even necessarily be whitewashing of the characters that go in there and do that. It's actually something that's much more insidious, is that the story would not be of the perspective of the kids that were trapped in there. It would be the perspective of... um, Because if if I remember correctly, there were people flying in from different parts of the world going into rescue. Mm -hmm. It would be the fact that you could have a fictional American character flying in to go and rescue these boys... And it's all about him self discovery, you know, d- self development, and so on yeah. to go and find a, an example. Um, oh, who have been trapped because of yes. some um, some problem with the infrastructure of even yeah. even, even, so, even and this even, is one of the things. So. Yeah, and this is one of the things the Thai government was definitely keen to portray 
the, the accuracy of what goes on in Thailand. Okay, they haven't got the, all the equipment, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and international people came in and helped them out, but doesn't mean that they couldn't have done it themselves. And that's the thing. The main focus of that storyline would be the fact that it took an American exactly. to come in and rescue them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you five seven one. I think is is the film that was in uh, the mid nineties. The uh, the um, it, it was it was a, it was a film that came out with John Bon Jovi, uh, Ma uh, Matthew McConaughey, etc. I can't remember the exact actors in it, but it, this was a, a retelling of uh, a, you know the uh, a war story of the Enigma machine being discovered and. And the Enigma machine, uh, this was a yeah. coding machine back in, in World in War II. World II yeah. And it, that movie basically said American navals, um, uh, naval officers found the Enigma machine and broke the code. Which, when we know that that's not the case. So that's the same kind of thing that could eff effectively happen. Mm. Where it'll be a fictional story about this character going and do that. Exactly. Uh, Last King of Scotland is the same kind of thing. Where you had James McAvoy, a <coughs> fictional character, who went to Uganda to meet Idi Amin. And, you, in, and so, so, it's, it, so I now want, it's like... I'm not totally against that gay check. Mm. It just, it just. So it's not stop. a situation where the government have the rights and are selling them or no, anything. No, no. I think, I think, but they just need to. They just want to protect the they story. Want, yeah. They, they want input, basically, and I think um, any production company would be wise to make sure they work in co in conjunction with the Thai government because yeah. the Thai government could put blocks in place. And if they did that, then it will be filmed outside the country, and everyone would know sure. that it's just not authentic. Of course, mm. you know what? Uh, you know what? If if any of you who listen out there disagree with what I've been saying on what uh, David's saying, what Laura's saying, feel free to message us. Uh, send us a message on Twitter. Uh, at STB underscore Resonance FM or on Facebook, Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. Let us know what you think about this particular issue. This show is, uh, you're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Akko. I'm Laura Sampson. I'm David Campbell. Okay, so we don't have a guest, but we're going to do a spotlight, uh, which is going to be a game that we're going to be playing. Uh, and we've announced it, but we'll talk about more about the game after we do the spotlight theme. Okay, so, um, instead of having a guest in today, um, we decided we're going to play a little game, a little movie trivia game. No, 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 no. no, no. What, what, what? You decided and announced it to both me and Laura. I don't want and people to know how the sausage is made. It doesn't want to, no, 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 we, we, we. It's all about the three, hashtag it's all about the three yeah, way. Okay. It is, it is, it was a group decision. Mm. So, the game is, we, we, um, Hollywood Reporter did a survey of a thousand, in, over a thousand um, uh, uh, people who were working in the entertainment industry. And the survey was looking at the, uh, the f top, the 20, top 25 favorite villains. So you have people working in the movie industry and the film industry who have come together and they've given their opinion on who the top 25 uh, movie villain should be. Now, we put this out on Facebook, and James Noble, uh, we need to get James back in the studio. James Noble, he's an author. Uh, you need to you check out some of his books. He gave us his, uh, he gave us his list of, of top five. Um, and he mentioned Hans Gruber from Die Hard. That's uh, Alan Rickman. Uh, Blofeld or, and or Goldfinger might get a mention. <laughs> Blofeld. Yeah. He said the Joker, Dark Knight version. So he's specific saying, you know, Heath Ledger uh, from Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Darth Vader. Everyone's throwing in Darth Vader in there from obviously Star Wars movies. Um, Hannibal Lecter from... Yeah. Uh, for, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Silence of the Lambs. From yeah. Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal and etc. Uh, and then he says maybe Anton Chigurh. Anton Chigurh is uh, Javier Bardem from No Country for Old Men, uh, the uh, Coen Brothers movie. Oh, yeah. Um, and then his last one is John Doe, which is Kevin Spacey in Seven, which is the Dave Fincher movie. Okay, so very, very great, you know, good picks, James. Well done for that list. Um, I excused myself from this. Um, oh, and really? I, uh, I did. Um, <laughs> I did. Uh, so I'm going to be the judge. I've got my list here, and I. You may asked... need to jump in with uh, with a few no, more no. that we may have missed. No, no, no. I, here's what here's here's what we'll do. Because I, I asked I asked before the show began. I asked Laura and I asked David to pick five to, to come up with five. And what we're going to do is they'll make, we'll go one one back to back to back back to back. Get their list first, and when they mention each person, I will say what number in list it occurs. Okay. At the end of the you know the five rounds, we're gonna see who got the highest in that list, and that person wins the golden 
it's all about the three-way um, uh, <laughs> price. Hashtag, it's all about the three-way price. Okay, so, ladies first. Laura, don't put you, Oh, it was, that's, that's, okay, you held your phone. I thought you were, you were research. No research. No, don't no. do any research. No, no, no. What is your... Pick, pick, who's your first shot? The first one I wrote down was um, Oliver Reed's uh, Bill Sykes from Oliver Twist, who scared me when I was from the age of six or seven Ooh, and still does. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. Unfortunately, not in the top 25. Ah. David. First one that came to mind, and I struggle to remember the film, but it, it's already been mentioned, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. Let's see Silence if Hannibal Lecter is on there. Hannibal Lecter is number two. Right. There you go. Well, well done, David. All right. So, Laura, that's one nil to you. This is a penalty shootout. We just had the World Cup finish. Are you going to come back so, strong? Um, so, you can't so mention I'm, Hannibal Lecter. That's crossed off the list. Oh, I had him. <laughs> oh, crossed off the list. Um, I also had uh, John Doe and the Joker. You which ha- I can't no, have you, either, can hold, I? Hold on, you can't... Ha- no, what do you mean you can't have either? The game well, is- James already picked them. He's not in the penalty kick. He, he's the he's spectator who's just taken a shot into the goal and he's been ushered off the pitch. The match is against yourself and David. So, he hasn't mentioned John Doe or the Joker, so you can pick one of those two. John Doe. You go, John Doe. John Doe is not on the list, unfortunately. <gasps> that, no that, way! I am shocked no by way. that. No way! Yeah, I am shocked by that. So, that's uh, two... That's a, a nil to you. Oh. Uh, David... Second shot. Um, oh God! Don't steal her pick. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say. Well, um, I've got my list here, so you know. Okay, yeah, go for it. Alien from Alien. Alien from Alien. Oh, that's, well, that's a good call. Nope, not in the top twenty-five. Yeah. It uh, all right. So those two choices gone. And uh, Laura, what's your third pick? I can't remember his name. Just but describe it, and I'll go for it. Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Django Unchained. Oh, uh, oh, you. Uh, oh, that is a good one. He. he oh, I was thinking about. Was, he was evil. I was I, thinking about him the other day. Fact, I have to say, that was the point. That character was where I thought, "Oh my God, this man can act." Yes. Because up until then, it was just like, Ugh. I'm going to be kicking I, myself because I'm going to think of the name later on. But the fact that I can't remember the name is because he's not in the top twenty-five. So sorry, but your third choice, uh, third shot. I'm not gone doing very down. well here. Not am doing I? very well at all, David. You've got one pick so far. What is your number three choice? Nurse or your Ratchet third choice? from One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest. Nurse Ratchet. That's a weird pull. Um, you think she's a strong enough villain to go on the list? She's she's nasty piece of work. Still. She's not on. The, not in the top twenty-five, is she? She's actually. She's not in the top twenty-five. She's in the top ten. She's number five in the top. In, in she's the top ten. She's number five in that list. Okay. So well no, done. No, no, good no. Good she, she was good a time. nasty piece of work in that uh, film. I was trying to make it a little bit suspenseful, but no. that wasn't good. <laughs> 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 Didn't work. Okay, so um, Laura, you're you're on your fourth one now. Do you wanna do you wanna forfeit or you wanna try and take a, another shot and see if you can redeem yourself? Well, I might <clears> since <throat> I, I might as well carry on as I started. Uh, Norman Bates. Norman Bates. Ooh, let's see. Norman That's Bates. That's a good one. Number seven. Number seven is right there. Oh, thank Norman God. Bates. David, do you want to finish Laura off right now? Um, I've only got one more to say. Go for it. Jack Torrance in The Shining. Good pick. Jack Torrance from The Shining lands at number... Not at number 10. No. He is on the list. He's number 13. So, well, well done. You got two. We'll stop there because you got two. Um if you got two from the top ten, I said get oh, trying right, to get okay. top ten. You had five choices to get top ten. Oh, Follow the rules, man. Only, hang on, hang on. We've only done four. I know, but do you, oh, you said that was the last one on your list. Yeah, that's you? the last one. I could always pick up. Right. Never mind. Uh, hold on, Laura. One, one last shot. Oh, um, I'm, mine are just boring. They've you already mentioned been someone. said. You mentioned someone. Go on. You mentioned someone. Go on. Heath Ledger's Joker. Well done, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger's Joker is number four. All right, David, you wanted to go for the last one. What is it? Well, that was he, that was that. He but it's already favorite. been called. But it's so. been called, so I can't see it. So you're gonna forfeit? No, no, no. <laughs> I got three. Okay, in that particular competition, David, you won because you had number two, you had number two and you had number so you had two in the top ten, while Laura had one in the top ten. So unfortunately, Laura, you need to brush up on your skills. I, I thought I trained you better than well, this. Well, now I've I was now I've you. started now I've started thinking about Mr. Kurtz and I mean, but I don't know. I've I should have thought of um, what's it called? Um, Khan, you know. Khan. Yes. From Rafa Khan. Now it's, <laughs> all over. it's all over. It's all over. It's all over. Here's us what the list. The top ten is. From top twenty-five, going all the way to one. Uh, Agent Smith, twenty-five. Number twenty-four, Wiley Coyote. Oh. Number twenty-three, Wiley Co- Scar. <laughs> Wiley Coyote. Scar Agent from Lion King. Agent Smith yeah. from Matrix. Yes. Yeah. Twenty-two, Tony Montana from Scarface. Uh, Twenty-one, Bruce or the Shark from Jaws. 
20, Terminator from number, from Terminator, the first one. Uh, number 19, Alex DeLarge from uh, Clockwork Orange, Michael McDowell. Uh, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. What did yes. I say? Did I say Michael? You said, you said Michael. Yeah. I meant Malcolm. Yeah. Malcolm McDowell. Yeah. Number 18, Tommy DeVito, which is Joe Pesci from Goodfellas. Oh, yeah. I think I'm funny, I'm funny how. Yeah, him. Mm. Anyway. Uh, number 17, Michael Corleone, Al, Al Pacino from the Godfather movies. Number 16, Hal 9000, Robot. Uh, his first robot on the, on the thing. Doesn't matter. Um, A Terminator? That doesn't Ta- count. No, you're right. You're right. Sorry. I Robots take that back. and uh, mafia bosses are heavy on this list. Hang on, hang on. Uh, in, in, before the top ten. Terminator wasn't a robot. It was a robot. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was artificial. My fault. What do you think a robot is? Do you think a robot is born? I, I think I think <laughs> there, there, there is there, there is a difference between a robot and, and what they call artificial life because he was alive. Oh, hold he, on, he, was, it, he actually had skin and uh, thing and blah blah blah. He was robots, artificial intelligence. Okay, ro- robots usually is sort of like programmed metal, blah blah blah. Yeah, he was but metal he's, he's metal and one. he does he have a, a program. Yeah, but he had a skin as well. Yeah, which and he was, was just the exterior, learning. and he also learned. Yes, because that's his program. His program is to so, learn and adapt. I'm going. To I have to look that one up. <laughs> I, I don't agree, but carry on. Fair enough. Hey, I, at least I don't feel bad for having said there was a robot and then oh. there was another robot in there. Number 15, Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Number 14, Alex Forrest, which is Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction. Number 13, Jack Torrance. You call Jack Torrance mm-hmm. from The Shining. Uh, number 12, uh, Baby Jane Hudson from Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. <laughs> yes. uh, Betty Davis. Mm. Uh, number oh, 11, God, yeah. Hans Gruber. So uh, James uh, got Hans Gruber as well. Uh, now we're going to top 10. Uh, Anton Chigur, played by Javier Bardem, won the Oscar for it. No Country for Old Men. Good oh, film. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Another Oscar winner for the part player for this, uh, Colonel Hans Lander, which is uh, Christoph Waltz from uh, Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Annie uh, Wilkes from Misery. Kathy oh Bates. Gosh, yeah. Oh, Kathy of Bates. course, yeah. of yep. course. Norman Bates, Laura, you called it, number seven. Thank you. Uh, Miranda Priestley from The Devil Wears Prada. I wouldn't have classified she, her as being a... Oh, she's not a baddie. Yeah. She's not a baddie. She's just um, a powerful... CEO. Well, yeah, the, okay. the Hollywood Reporter survey of a thousand people disagree with you because they, they it's gave just cause, number it's six. Because they had to, they just had to choose a beautiful woman. Well, okay. I guess no. uh, number five, Nurse Ratchet. So, David, you mm. are on that. So, from one who flew of the cuckoo's nest. Number four, The Joker, Dark Knight. You got that. Mm. Uh, so, you actually, tie well, tie in terms of numbers because you both got two in the top ten, mm. um, but obviously David's was higher because number three, number three, Wicked Witch of the West from. Uh, from Wizard of Oz. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> I was thinking, which what? My of course, brain. Of course. If only I had a brain. Uh, <laughs> number two, Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, which okay? Which just quick uh, diver, quick uh, sidetrack. Which uh, which version of Hannibal Lecter do you prefer? Ha- um, uh, Anthony Hopkins or Brian Cox? I prefer Anthony Hopkins. Okay. But, um, I, I keep f- rem- remembering Manhunter, the yes. film Manhunter. That's with Brian Cox, yes. And, and that was scarelicious, if mm. you see what I mean. So, you know, it's I, I, there's not very much difference between the that's two. That's true. Not many people really know that Brian Cox was uh, mm. Hannibal Lecter as well, but that's because it's uh, it's kind of it's not as well known as in the Hannibal Lecter oh, movies. Um, anyway, and number one was <gasps> Darth Vader from Star Wars. That was obvious. It, he's been he's been winning villains for how many years going on. So uh, anyway, you're listening to shoot the, the things breeze. Things you can do with a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to shoot the breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Ako. I'm Laura Sampson. I'm David Campbell. And we are going into our top five category. Thanks, David. Uh, this sorry. is just fantastic. <laughs> it's like, okay, if you are listening to the show for the first time, um, there is a running gag that basically every time David steps behind the controls, it all goes to hell. And it's, I'm, I told you I'm going to call you out every single time. Laura has had to step out. Um, she's, she's going to a storytelling uh, event. So well done, Laura. Speak to you later. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Ako. 
I'm David Campbell. The catastrophe is behind the mic. Uh, so we're now in the top five favorite segment. And our, as we mentioned earlier, top five favorites uh, category this week is favorite swords and sandals, TV shows, or movies. So we don't have a guest. It's just going to be myself and David going back to back during our <coughs> top five. David, would you like to give us your number five and your number four? Okay. Number five is a sword and sandals film, an epic historical drama. And it's called El Cid. It's from 1961. And it romanticizes the life of Christian Castellan, the knight Don Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, who was called El Cid from the Arabic Asidi. Whitewashing as well, right? Because El Cid wasn't exactly Arabic. It wasn't played by an uh, Arabian actor. No, it, it, it wasn't. It stars, it, it was um, playing by the, the the very Mediterranean... Child Nelson. Child Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it had... It had Sophia Loren. Sure. <laughs> well, you're getting closer. She's getting closer. She's yeah, Italian. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so El Cid is your number five. What's your number four? Come on. I, I mean, this has <clears throat> to get in there. Anyone who is a fan of Ray Harryhausen will know this film. Clash of the Titans, 1981. I'm not talking about the remake. I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about you. Ray Harryhausen, Clash of the Time, Wickedness. I'm glad you clarified. Mm. Maggie Smith, uh, I can't remember his name. Maggie he, Smith, Laurence Olivier, Harry Hamlin, Ham, Ham, Ju Hamlin Judy yes. Boker, uh, Burgess Meredith. There was loads. And yes. It's just, oh, excellent. Uh, you know, as a kid... You know, yeah. if, if any kid watching that film will just be entranced by that film. Absolutely. I, it's like um, I was reading a bit of trivia recently about um, the remake. Um, and the, the, in, in the original, there's an owl that is one That's of the right, prizes yeah. that he gets. And the owl guides him as they go along mm. on his quest. And him being uh, Perseus. That's it, yeah. Yeah, Perseus, yeah. So uh, Perseus, uh, when played by Harry Hamlin, is guided by this, uh, this owl. But the trivia I read was that... Um, uh, Sam Worthington, who took over that role in the remake, did not like the use of the owl, so they had to do had to do a, a they had to do rewrites and rewrote the owl out of it. But they kept the owl in there because it's just a piece of like um, like an Easter egg, and he just he finds it in in there and he throws it aside and whatnot. And that kind of annoyed me even more. There were a whole bunch of other stories about how the so I, I watched the film and I watched the, the director's cut, not the director's cut, the DVD version where you saw loads of deleted scenes. Mm -hmm. If you watch deleted scenes, there is it, it, the re, they left all the bits that were cut out make a completely new story. Um, and I'm not going to ruin the story for you. It's already been ruined. But if you were to watch the first movie, or watch the movie itself, then watch the deleted scenes, you can make up an entirely new storyline from those deleted scenes which I thought was much better because I was watching a movie and I was thinking, that doesn't make any sense. Why would Zeus, played by Liam Neeson, do that? And why would... Da, 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 and, and then deleted scenes explained all of it and I'm like, uh, ridiculous. But yeah, they obviously it made enough money they made a second one. <coughs> but uh, yeah, so that's your number four. Uh, so your number one, uh, five, five was four. Uh, El Cid. Number four was uh, <clears throat> Clash of the Titans. Yeah. My number five, I've got a joint number five, two TV shows. One is Spartacus, the TV show, ran from 2010 to 2013. Uh, it had a lot of faces that you see regularly in TV and in movies these days. Uh, Andy Whitfield, unfortunately, who played Scott, um, uh, Spartacus, he died, uh, I think, in, after the second season. And so they had someone else come in to replace him. But other char other actors in there, Manu Bennett, uh, Lucy Lawless, Jai Courtney, John Hanna, uh, Peter Mensah, all these faces, you'll recognize them when you watch TV uh, from Spartacus, the TV show. Uh, that's, that's one of my number fives but I'm pairing it up with Rome which is another uh, um, TV show which was, which again famous faces um, Kevin McKidd Ray Stevenson most uh, famously from the, th that show um, both set in Rome around the gladiatorial times great shows if you get the chance go and watch both of them my number four I figured I'd move away from what we'll be considering as sword, the traditional sword and sandals and I went with Zatoichi which is, uh, is it's, it's Takeshi uh, Kitano, Takeshi beat Kitano, uh, 2003 movie about a blind swordsman. Um, it's 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 excellent. It's colorful. The choreography is fantastic, and there's a brilliant uh, tap dancing number at the very end. I've never seen that. Film. You should check it out. It's called Zatoichi. I, I recommend it. it. And I know a lot of people don't like watching uh, movies with subtitles, but you, you you don't even have to worry about the talking. Just watch the ballet of swords play and of sword play and and tap dancing at the end uh, because it's fantastic. Anyway, that's my number five, uh, Spartacus of Rome, and number uh, four is Zatoichi. You're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Akko.
I'm David Campbell. And we're in the top five favorites category. And our category this uh, uh, our category this week is swords and sandals, movies or TV shows. David, what's your number three and what's your number f- two? Right. My number three is a, um, is a film that a lot of people will have heard of. It's called 300. <laughs> no, fair enough. And um, it, hmm, it's the the film is actually based on a comic that was done by uh, called Three Hundred by Frank, Frank Miller. Miller, yes, and Lynn Varley. Now, that itself was based on a film called The Three Hundred Spartans. Yes, that was done in, it made in nineteen sixty two, and that was depicted the Battle of Thermon Thermolo, oh, Thermophili, Phil, Philly. Thermopylae? Th- Thermopylae. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was like, what were you saying? <coughs> Thermopylae. No, it's okay. I, I get that stuck yeah. in my throat as well. Um, and it revolves around good King Leonides, who's um, played by Gerald Butler, who leads 300 uh, Spartans into battle against the Persian god King Xerxes, who's played by Rodrigo Santoro. Um, and his army of 300,000 oh. Persian soldiers. Now, it's, it's like... Um, 300 against 300,000. Yes. Um, and there's a whole heap of uh, backstory. There's a lot of politics, betrayal, and everything else going on. Strong women, strong wife, mm-hmm. kids. You need to watch it. But I really like the version that you saw in 1998 because they used a lot of CGI technology okay. uh, to make everyone look their best. So you mean the uh, 300 Spartans? The 300 Spartans. Okay. Every single one of them had a six to eight pack. Oh, nice. Every <gasps> single one of them had a six or eight pack and that was all CGI. Wait, so hold on. You're, t- okay, you're talking about Okay, you because you just said that uh, you like the 1998 version. No, sorry, I like the 2006 version. Ah, sorry. gotcha. Okay, that the, makes sense. The 1998 version was the car- comic. Yes, <laughs> but it was based on the comic, so therefore. It was, ah, gotcha, gotcha. And in the comic, they all had six pack. So in the film, they all had six pack. Hold on, do you think it was CGI? The, yes, the six pack. It, it was definitely. You don't think they worked out to get those abs? No. What they, makes you that? Because it was reported at the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I remember, okay, I remember when that came out, when that movie came out, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember um, Men's Health Magazine had um, um, Gerard Butler on it, had Michael Fassbender on it as well. And they were talking about their, the you know, the routine, the workout routine that they had to do, the nutrition that they had to go on to get those six of packs. Of course. And yeah, so, but, and that's all CGI. But, but most of them, you know, they had 300 of them and virtually they had, it's all right, it's, Sure, really, fair really enough. They use CGI. They okay. use sort of some kind of camera trickery. You know, it makes me feel better now about my own six pack, so <laughs> which is in the fridge. So <laughs> same here. <laughs> so what's your number two? Number two is a joint, actually. Um, Gladiator, uh, two thousand from two thousand, starring uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah, Crow. the Ridley, Ridley, Ridley Scott. Scott that's yeah. it. Yeah, and um, and Ben Hur from nineteen fifty nine. I mean, they're near enough the same kind of thing to be quite honest. Ben Hur was Charlton Heston, right? That's Charlton Heston again. So you've got two Charlton Hestons in the Yeah, he, he sneaked in again. Yeah. He, neither of those films has he got a gun, but yeah, to one enough. side. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Gladiator one, I, I really remember because there was that scene in the central ring where yes. he's fighting against all that, and the lions keep popping out uh-huh. left, right, and center. All that, all that really good imagery, stuff like that. Ben Hur is just, ah, oh, just, you know, classic. That's true. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's just classic. I mean, that, that scene... Um, oh God! Where is um, the chase? The chariot race. The chariot race. Yeah, come on! That is what. That is a classic scene. You're absolutely right. I mean, those are two strong picks: Gladiator and Ben Hur. Mm. I didn't pick them in my list, but that's mainly because there were tons of other things fighting, and I'd already picked Spartacus, which is kind of yeah. Uh, yeah it's a com- Spartacus is a combination. <clears throat> Spartacus, the TV show, is kind of a combination of Gladiator and 300, mm. because Spartacus, the TV show is just as heavily stylized as 300 with the blood and slow motion and the sex and everything else. Uh, but it's also about Spartacus, who's a gladiator and who leads the rebels to um, to, to not conquer, but like attack Rome, etc. Uh, but yeah, very good pick with uh, Gladiator and then Ben-Hur as well, going all classic. But then before that, you went with 300 as your number three. For me, my number three, same 300. I guess three, 300 matches 
I can't say anything more uh, adding to what you've said because you pretty much covered everything. Uh, Zack Snyder's, um, not his directorial debut, his, he did his second movie because his first was Dawn of the Dead. Um, so his, uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's more the debut of the Zack Snyder that we know now because that was the that was one of the first movies that he came out with that was highly stylized where it was you know CGI and it just come after uh, Sin City which was done by Rod- Robert Rodriguez also mm-hmm. um based on the comic book com- um Sin City or the graphic novel Sin City done by Frank Miller who's the same um comic book uh, comic book writer but anyway we're going into the weeds 300 um loved it because <clears throat> it, it's like it, it is it's such a it's such a, I don't want to say it's such a man's film, but it's such a macho film. That's what it is. It's such a macho film because you had, and, and I'm using macho not in the uh, sexist um, um, meth, um, manner because although macho, man, it's fine. But even the women as well. I mean, uh, uh, Lena Headey plays his wife. I can't remember her name, but she's a, she's a tough character herself. She comes in and she's a strong woman who basically is probably tougher than he is. I mean, he's a man. He takes his 300 soldiers and they go to go battle. She does her own battles, as you mentioned, the political aspect of it. Mm. And she stands her ground against Dominic West, who's a scheming politician. Uh, uh, but it's it's a great, it's, it's a great mm. fun movie to sit down and watch and really enjoy it and really mm. get into it. It's like, if you wanted to go and do anything that requires you to get up and go, go and watch 300 because it does that for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's my number three, 300. Um, my number two, I decided to go again, left wing. Uh, left wing, um, uh, yeah, I decided to sort of switch uh, lanes and not necessarily go down what would traditionally be considered as a sword and sandal movie, but I went with, or TV show, I went with Shaka Zulu, the TV series. Now this is a TV series which was done in 1986. You have Edward Fox, uh, sorry Edward Fox, um, Christopher Lee, Robert Powell, uh, and it, it's it's focusing on uh, the British invasion of Africa um, and the resistance that they f- they met when they encountered this warrior king called Shaka Zulu. They essentially halted the British attack um, on Africa. Even though he led the Zulus with their spears and 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 witchcraft and and um, what were considered as uh, primitive weaponry, and they they were they almost defeated the British. The British could not gain a, f- a foothold in Africa because of Shaka Zulu and his and his tactics and his and and his um, and his intelligence and the way he he brought them in and he learned from them and used it, their tactics against them. Uh, and it, the the show I, I grew up watching it. It was great, great TV show. Um, and it just shows his rise through to become king and also his downfall when people betrayed him and so on and shows everything else but definitely check it out it's on YouTube you can watch it for free go oh, check it out good. Shaka Zulu um, TV series it's it's a great show so that, I wanted to go with swords and sandals with that one I know it's not t- technically no it is they use spears and they kind of wore sandals <laughs> we won't go that way <laughs> but anyway that's my number two <clears throat> you're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM I'm Marcus E. Akko And I'm David Campbell. And we are currently in the top five favorites category, uh, or top five favorites section. And our category this week is Swords and Sandals TV shows or movies. David, what's your number one? It's a TV series. And uh, the TV series was on BBC in 1976. And I watched it all the way through as young as I was. And it's been repeated several times, and I just think it's a fantastic, really, really good series. I Claudius. Ah, oh, yes, I Claudius. Okay. Um, based on I Claudius and Claudius the God, uh, uh, written by Robert Graves, uh, the absolutely brilliant, and it shows the transition of a. Uh, gosh, how do you how would you describe him? Um, a very, very intelligent man who was told that if he wanted to live, mm-hmm. that he would have to play the fool. Okay. And he became emperor after all that were in front of him died off, including Caligula, who was one of the most notorious, notorious of all the emperors. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that he got up to is just like, you, you don't want to know, including his horse and Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> what? Um, um, Nero came after yeah. um, after Claudius, but um, the whole of the state of Rome, yeah. to be quite honest, um, owes a lot of it owes its thanks to 
Claudius because his infrastructure, a lot of it still stands today. That that didn't get burnt down by Nero when he fiddled as yeah. Rome was burning. But it's the, the, it's just just got who's who. It's just got Derek Jacobi, Claudius, Sean Phillips, Brian Blessed, Blessed, Patrick Stewart, John Reese Davis, John Hurt, Patricia Quinn. Ian it's Ogilvy, a real so huge who's who of uh, British massive. talent back in the seventies, right? Yeah, it's just massive. I mean, the first place I actually saw Patrick Stewart was in I Claudius. Claudius. Okay. and I recognised him when he then took on the role as Captain Picard. Yeah, as a result of that, and you know, the background training from I Claudius and all his theatre work suited him well for that. To okay. be quite honest, but it's great show. I know it sounds long and boring and slow. No. <clears throat> it no, does. It's not. I mean, I must admit, they cut out some of the... I, after, after reading the books, I realised they cut out some of the most funniest scenes in, the, in yeah. the books to do the show, but it is just well worth it. It is so entertaining. That's a good... It's a good pick. It's... Mm. It, the, the fact that I, hearing you talk about it, I've heard about I, Claudius. I just... I've never got myself around to watching it. Again, mm. my list is long and I still want to check it out, but <laughs> definitely I will add that to the list. Mm. Uh, I, Claudius. My number one Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones, There's. I don't need to explain it. If you haven't heard of Game of Thrones, where are you living? Um, <laughs> it, it, it's coming up to his last season. It, I think his... Yeah, season eight is the last season I yes. heard. Yes. Yeah, um, there's a there's a countdown on my on my, on my my phone somewhere that is actually counting down to uh, the premiere of the final season of Game of Thrones. So that's my number one pick for Sword and Sandals uh, TV show. You're listening to Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Marcus E. Ako. I'm I'm David Campbell. I want to thank you for listening. Tune in next week uh, for our probably final show of the season because we're shutting down uh, for, for the season after that. But uh, we'll feed you more information on our Facebook page, which is Shoot the Breeze on Resonance 104.4 FM, or our Twitter page, which is at STB underscore Resonance FM. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for listening from David Campbell as well. Good night.